Alright guys, Sergeant Cooper here again today. Early morning for me because I'm busy tonight, so I'm recording this early in the day. If I do miss anything by this evening, I will cover that on Friday or Saturday, whatever the case may be. Today, a lot of stuff to follow up from yesterday's video. I'll leave it linked down below if you guys haven't seen it yet. Talking about the CDL, the Call of Duty League being announced, the official branding, all that stuff's been confirmed. In addition to that, we have the leaked names for a lot of the teams, especially related to FaZe, Atlanta, exactly what's going on there. There. We're going to expand on a lot of that content in today's video. So I hope you guys enjoy it. Like if you do, subscribe if you're new as always. I would greatly appreciate it. Firstly, thanks to Mr. Esport Connor for pointing this out to me. Something that I wasn't completely aware of. This is the ownership that Tencent have of the following companies. Now we talked yesterday about all that, uh, you know, controversy with Activision Blizzard and the whole China, Hong Kong thing. We talked about that yesterday, don't want to get into it again today. Interestingly, that I didn't even know, that thanks for Connor for pointing this out to me, that Tencent actually own 5% of Activision Blizzard and they own 40 odd percent of Epic Games, 100% of Riot, like honestly crazy stuff and of course Tencent are closely affiliated with the Chinese government because you can't be, be a a huge Chinese company uh, without that and um, and yeah Tenant was larger than the top three US publishers including Activision Blizzard so it's crazy stuff really what I thought was good just real quick to comment on this um, It'll be fascinating to see what Blizzard does today and today, or today and, uh, well, today, tomorrow, whatever. Do they backtrack risk and the loss of billions of dollars? Do they continue supporting an authoritarian regime, alienating fans and employees in the never-ending pursuit of growth? Um, and Tim Sweeney, which is pretty good as the, as the leading shareholder of, uh, of Epic Games, who are like 40% owns, says they support the rights of Fortnite players and creators to speak, the, to speak about politics and human rights. So it's pretty damn cool. And Hutch, uh, does this tweet as well. Epic is a US company and I'm the controlling shareholder. Tencent is approximately 40% shareholder. There are many other employees. Yes, absolutely. That will never happen on my watch as the founder, CEO and controlling shareholder. And as Hutch says, this is the standard to meet. Moving onwards, Ferro unrestricted free agent if there are any teams out there that still want me as a starter let me know but my dms i'm also open to be the sixth man of the year so obviously nothing much happening for fair right now and pretty much all the teams have got their players locked right so um seems a little bit late to get on a starting roster i would say drama gintroid stamino holler and nova looking for an organization to represent we do know now that there are going to be at least at the very least open bracket events so um, you won't necessarily need to be on a path to pro organization within the contenders league or whatever they're going to call it to compete next season. You can be in the open bracket. So uh, this is a team. Quick look at this diamond card that Lion Man made for Crim6. So oh, this is pretty damn cool. Championship winning organizations. Cola, EG and Optigami, of course, now likely moving on to the Dallas team. 67 majors attempted. Um, or attended 3.5 average placing and uh, the crazy thing really is that he's uh you know made 42 finals attending 67 like uh you know tournaments and won 33 championships out of those 67 so still crim 6's overall uh, winning record at events is just about 50% like, whatever event he would turn up to, he'd pretty much have a 50% chance of winning, which is crazy stuff, and like a two-thirds chance almost of making the finals. Of course, COD Champs rings as well, two of them in the bag. So, uh, really cool stuff, and I thought I'd point this out to you guys, because I thought it was a pretty damn cool little thing. Really like this point for Brian as well, that he uh, tweeted me out yesterday, which I didn't notice, of course, at the time. And this is a very good point. When Scraps and Zuma left, uh, and I think Attach as well, left FaZe Clan, they said, you know, parting ways, thanks for all your service, like, you know, hope you have a good time moving onwards or whatever, right? They did those tweets to release those players. It was for Crowder, they didn't make those tweets, right? They didn't do a parting ways tweet, which uh, gave Brian the idea at the time that FaZe are going to have Atlanta to some degree. Now, we're still not sure exactly, as far as at least when I'm recording this video, how FaZe are going to manage that, given what we heard about that you have to not be involved in other esports in order to have your name in a Call of Duty spot. FaZe could certainly own Atlanta, but uh, it would be, well, 
we're not sure if they could call it phase because I thought that that wouldn't be a possibility. They'd have to call it something else like all the other organizations are doing right. Um, but, you know, maybe phase was just a placeholder name. That is possible. So let's get on to the main topic here. I thought this was very, very interesting coming out of Red Eye uh, Esports Legends. So Rod Breslau Slasher says, Yesterday, noticed first by by Adam Fitch. These are the eight names that we talked about. So Atlanta Phase, Optic Los Angeles, Seattle Surge, Chicago Huntsman, uh, Minnesota Rocker. Guessing this is meant to be an E again, but maybe not. I don't know. Um, anyway, so these are the rumors. Now, the London Royal Ravens was something which stood out to me because at the time we heard this Ravens uh, leak. And then we saw they also had a trademark for the Royal Ravens. And we thought that was maybe just a clothing brand or a merchandise kind of thing. Which, And honestly, this doesn't sound as good anyway. Now, what Red Eye says is he quotes this. And uh, let's just have a look at it in more detail. Make sure this is fully on screen. The, the use of the word Royal is prohibited. Now, I thought this right. You can't just call a company a Royal Company in the UK. Because, um, well, it has implications that it's related to the Royal Family in some degree. It may sound weird to you guys in the states or elsewhere but uh calling something royal if it's not like officially chartered by royalty i thought was going to be questionable turns out it is questionable this is what um this is what he comes up with as the use of the following associated words king queen prince princess duke duchess his or her majesty and windsor the inclusion of such words can mislead the public by falsely suggesting an association with the royal family this could unfairly boost the image and status of a business should you wish to include any of the aforementioned words you will need to seek permission for the cabinet office in london uh, depending which uk jurisdiction your business is registered in some cases permission will be need to sort from elsewhere you will have to include relevant information to support your case a relevant association with the government or royal family the relation of a sensitive word to a street name or surname your business in an established public house or similar uh, which you know these aren't good enough reasons right these aren't reasons that london royal ravens have similarly using royal names on company products and pr promotional materials is prohibited because it suggests the company supplies goods to or is endorsed by the royal family these rules will often vary in exceptional circumstance so look there's this is pretty much for, for uk based right and uh and yes now the the malik whatever milk says uh my guess is they're not a registered business in the uk which of course would mean that they could get away with this if you're not registered in the uk now uh, george comes back and says you're correct but within his actual tweet if you look over here that like what he tweets out country of incorporation united kingdom so he kind of contradicts himself in his own tweet here because uh, they actually are incorporated in the uk and uh, as Red Eye says, they are indeed registered in the UK, so they can't get away with this. Um, you know, if they want to use the name, they'll have to get royal approval. So I thought that was pretty damn crazy that uh, the Royal Ravens name, they're not actually going to be able to use if that is their plan, especially if they're incorporated in the UK, as it seems they are, as George pointed out right here nicely for us. So, I mean, look, crazy scenes Personally, I'm happy about that because the Royal Ravens sounds way worse than just the Ravens. The London Ravens I actually kind of liked, but the Royal Ravens, like, why is the alliteration there? Why is it two words? I can't explain it. So um, I'm pretty happy with that overall, but I thought uh, thought it was a pretty interesting uh, little, little quirk. And I thought I'd run this past you guys, little Florida Mutineers concept logo from Almighty EB on Reddit here. Kind of like the idea of this. This is kind of the shape that people are rumoring and uh, yeah, kind of looks pretty cool. Related on the color schemes of other things. Wanted to run this past you guys as well. Related to Mesa Call of Duty and uh, the future of these guys. You may know Mesa from this last year of competing. They had a few amateur teams. But they're going to change what they're going to be operating as for this year. Discuss our plans for the 2020 Path to Pro system. From the time this is made public, I'll be actively searching for 15 players with a twist we'll not be sending a roster of five to compete instead we aim to boot up our academy academy by supporting whoever signs with the end goal of getting you a franchise spot so pretty much an academy situation will essentially be acting as an agency so interesting change here um thought this was also just <laughs> my the tweets i'm going through here are pretty much all over the place but thought this was just related to yesterday's logo this logo design from blaze looks way nicer than than the uh, the official Call of Duty League actually came out with. Uh, but anyway, I thought I'd run that past you guys. So yeah, Esports Kiln was the guy who made this statement. And then I think Drill came out as, as a result of this. Called months ago, this would happen. Organizations can essentially act as an agency, tie players up and sell them for a fee to a franchise 
org dynamic for the scene is changing, secure a, talent, a promising talent and cash in. Um, I feel you need to offer players more than social media management and managing their content. So yeah, which is obviously a fair point. Like guys like Bad Moon Talent, you feel like they're going to offer a player more or at least the uh, the friendship binds there are going to mean that you have more um, more leverage to get something out of, out of those individuals rather than just signing for an organization that is supposedly going to be an agency, but who knows what it's really going to do. This tweet, COD Toronto launch party sorted 24th of October. Played the new Call of Duty early. They've got a couple of guests on as well. Apparently, they've been putting these posters around. Pretty cool stuff. Haven't seen much of that from other organizations. Fair point here from Deserto Mike saying that only morons complain the price pool should be higher than 6 mil because the buy-in was 25 mil, which obviously is fair enough that teams aren't making their money back from the price pool. They're gonna, If they are going to make money back, they're going to be making their money back from elsewhere. Um, but at the same time, it does seem a little bit of a dichotomy when you've got 12 teams buying into a league for at least 25 million each, which is, you know, what, $300 million at the very minimum. And then you manage to funnel six of that into a prize pool for an entire year of a season. Six million is a lot of money, of course, more than I think the Overwatch League is. And also, if it's just spread over one one season and also over 12 teams, was the Overwatch League has more teams and the CDL before, the CWL has had more teams. So obviously not a complete disaster, but still I thought a, an interesting thing to look at. This tweet as well came from Dallas COD Updates. This is not a tweet that's affiliated with the COD Dallas roster. Uh, he's, you know, what do you think our rumored team would be? Uh, now, Clay says, you know, after complexity, I don't think I could I could team with Krim again. And Krim replies, you wait five years to tell me this? What's going on? Uh, just implying that they're going to be teaming. Also, just to quickly touch on what the ranking system is going to be like for Modern Warfare, Elliot replies, please don't be seasonal, please don't be seasonal, as in like you play for a season and then your ranks kind of get reset. Gaming Revo replies with this face and then goes on to do this tweet, seasonal ranks in Modern Warfare won't be infinite, the max will be around 160, but it's still being determined. So I think the idea is that as you go through the season, your rank will then be reset, so you have to build up again, kind of like a Fortnite system if you guys play that, but I haven't played it in ages, but I heard people referring it to kind of um, Fortnite, so maybe there's some truth to that. And finally, just before we end the video, welcome Padaman as social media manager for London COD. Congratulations here. Hopefully we can actually see some better tweets out of London now. Pado was formerly the social media manager of E United. He did some work for Red Reserve before that and has been for a long time with COD Gamepedia doing graphics and tweets for those guys as well. So highly deserved. Love to see it. And, um, and yeah, that's how we're going to close the video. So I hope you guys enjoyed. Like if you did, subscribe if you're new as always. Thanks for watching as always. I'll see you next time.